And welcome back to the Turdford Show. All right. This video is on trying to use Coulomb's law to find forces on particles arranged in some kind of pattern. So we've got four charges arranged in a square here, and we could have screwed around with it and like made the sides different lengths. I wasn't interested in doing that. But let's just say that the problem wants you to find the force on, let's say that this negative three nanocoulomb charge particle up in the corner. First off, what does Coulomb's law allow us to do anyway? So let's actually kind of like get into working this problem. Uh, let's see if I can get me a color like and a line size I like. All right, first off, remember, when we're doing Coulomb's law, we're not actually using for our calculations like the positives and negatives. They just tell us opposites and attractions. So here what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say that we've got a force between positive 2 and negative 3, and what's going to be true? That's going to be a charge that does what? There's an attractive force, and I will call that the force of 2 on 3. So that's a pretty awesome type of a writing I've done here. But anyway, so we'll call that force 2 on 3. And if I was curious, that means this one would also have a force 2 of 3 on it that way as well. And now if we look, I've also got a force 2, 3 here. So I've got a force of attraction between these two charged particles. So I have a force 2, 3. And what's kind of neat, you might have to change your notation, but since the sides are the same length in here, so in other words, I'm going to say that every side of what we're working with I'm going to say that every side of this is length A, then we don't have to. Those will actually be the exact same forces. Now, one thing, though, that we will have to kind of take note of in this one is this is a negative 3 and this is negative 3. So what's going to be true about the force between these two? These two repel each other. So this particle up in the corner, we would have a force... 3, 3 on it, and there's a couple of things that are kind of neat here as we look at this. Well, if you think about it, what's going to be true? Well, we're going to have to find the radius between these two, so we'll use Pythagorean. We know that in the case of this one, we know that the radius, that distance of separation, would basically be 2 squared plus 2 squared. So we, could, we can figure that out easy enough. So we can find the radius between these two particles. So really all this is, is first thing we need to do is we need to find each of these forces and then the only thing left to do at that point is, is just do a sum of the forces on this object. So I'm going to switch the color bl black again. I like writing in black. So the force of 3, 3 would be equal to K, Q1. So Q1 is, let's see, force of 3, 3 would be, well, huh, in this case, We'll just write square cause Q1 and Q2 are the same thing in this case. And that needs to be, we need to figure out a, for my numbers here real quick. So we've got a 2, what do we say, millimeter separation? 2, 10 to negative 3 square plus 2, 10 to the negative 3 square equals that, take a square root of our answer. So we've got a 2.8 millimeter. I don't know why I typed all the negative threes in there. Anyway. And so we can find this force between these two charged particles at this rate. Well, that's going to be easy enough. Let's see if we can grab that calculator back out. And we'll just make that calculation. So we know that K is 
10 to the 9 times 3 nanocoulombs. And this is what students always forget. They forget like if they're working on a nanocoulomb or millicoulomb or they forget to change their, put that exponent in there. Square divided by 2.8 10 to the negative third and square. That's the other thing. Students always forget to square their radiuses when they're doing these. So we've got a force between these two of 0 0.010 newtons. Now we need to find a force of 2 on 3. And we only have to do that once just because we've got the same radiuses and the same charges. So we'd have a K of 3 nanocoulombs times our 2 nanocoulomb charge over our radius of 2 millimeters. And I should have been a little bit more detailed in writing like my little coulombs and my meters out there. But I apologize for sake of time. I'm having to go a little bit fast in this video today. All right. So let's, let's just go through. Do this one. 8.99. And you may be saying, hey, Turdferg, there's a K button pre-programmed in your constants. Yeah, but I don't remember it. And I don't want to look for it live in this video. Uh, let's see. So what we got here times 3 exponent negative 9 times 2 exponent negative 9. And all that will be over 2 exponent negative 3 point zero one three. So point zero point zero one three newtons. So let's kind of do something. Let's go down and look at what we've essentially got. Let's go back to like when we first began taking physics and let's do this. Essentially what we've got in this problem, uh, now change this to the color red please. what we've got, and boy, I'm making a mess of what I'm doing. Give me an arrow. I'm trying to make this slicker, and instead I'm making it worse. What have we got? We've got a force 2, 3 going this way. We've also got a force 2, 3 of equal magnitude this way. And we've got a force at a 45 degree angle. You'd have to use trig to figure out this angle if the lengths were different. We've got a force of 3, 3 going this way. So all we've got to do is do our sum of the forces, and we'll be ready to finish this problem up. All right, so let's go through, making sure my pen and everything is still right. It's the only thing I don't like about my little fancy pad. So we've got a force here of 0 0.01 newtons and that was force 3 3 we've got a force 2 3 here of 0 0.013 newtons and a force 2 3 here as well that is also 0 0.013 newtons and we know that this is a 45 degree angle and so now all we have to do is go back to our basic physics some of the forces x in this problem. Well, what's pointing to the right? So we've got a, hmm, I'm going to be lazy, 0 0.01, what we got here? Cosine of 45 minus a 0 0.013 Newton force. I clean that up. So there's our sum of the forces X. Our sum of the forces Y would look like what? Well, what's pointing up? We've got a 0 0.01 Newton force at 
45 degrees. And then we'll subtract from it a also 0 0.013 Newton force. And so let's do our math on this real quick. And the cool thing is, <laughs> these are going to be the exact same numbers. And so cosine of 45. Hey, let's just do it in our head. Cosine of 45 is 0.707. I'll break out the calculator here. And so we're going to do what? Multiply that by 1 one hundredth. So we're actually going to end up moving that decimal two more places. So this essentially becomes what? When we multiply that, we've got 0 0.00707. And now we're going to subtract 0 0.013 from that. So essentially, what are we going to have here? When we subtract this, we're going to have negative, we're subtracting, we're going to have what? 0 0.006. And that's going to be both these numbers, negative 0 0.006. And so there are two answers, Newtons and Newtons. Now we need to figure out a net force on this. So, well, we know we've got a 0 0.006 force to the left. We've got a 0, 0, 0.06 Newton force down. So, go back, find your resultant. Your resultant would be equal to the square root of. And you're going to have to forgive me again for sake of time. I'm not going to make those calculations. To find your angle, it'd be the inverse tangent of the opposite, which in this case is <laughs> 0, 0, 006 over 0, 0, 0006, which I hate to say it. I can figure that angle out in my head easy enough. That's going to be a 45 degree angle on that. So anyway, that's all you have to do to find your resultant force on these particles. Now, I'm going to throw this at you real quick. My video's running too long. You may be asked to do the same question with electric fields. If you're asked to do it with electric fields, check this out. Remove the particles. See if I can group those two together. Can I group? Nope. Come on, buddy. Let me group. There you go. Group those together. Sorry, technical difficulties. If you're doing it with electric fields, remove the particle. And all you have to do with the electric fields is come in. Let's give me like some blue ink for my electric fields here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my videos are more about me playing with this goofy machine. If you're doing electric fields, just look at that spot. And so what you have to do is just remember how electric field lines work. Electric field lines move away from positive arc po objects. So you'd have an electric field due to charge 2 nanocoulombs at this point going away. Well, now think about that guy's electric field. You'd have an electric field going away from that one as well. So you'd have an electric field 2 going this way. And then which direction do electric field lines behave around negative? Electric field lines come towards negative particles. So we would have an electric field due to that 3 Coulomb charge going this way. So how do you work this one if it was throwing all these uh, charges at you like this? Well, all you do is use the formula for electric fields. Electric field is equal to K, and this time it's just Q. Now, if you want to, we could take a second to actually derive this, but we're not. KQ 
over r square. And so technically, once again, this is also an absolute value. But again, the reason why it's an absolute value is the only purpose of the positives and the negatives in here is it helps us find these directions for the electric field lines. But all you would have to do is go through and calculate your electric field for each charge, and then you'd go through and do basically a sum of the electric field X, a sum of the electric field Y, do your resultant just like normal. Once you sum your electric fields, do your resultants. And once you know your resultant electric field, we know a relationship between, we know the electric field is equal to force over the charge at that location. Some books will have like a little Q naught there. So what you do is this, find your resultant electric field using the, use this equation first to find your electric fields, then go in, do your sum of the electric fields X, sum of the electric fields Y, find your resultant, and then all you have to do is take like this three nano coulomb charge, and you plug your three nano coulombs in, and all you have to do is multiply your resultant electric field by your test charge, and that will tell you the force on that charged particle. So that's actually an easy way to do this. If I had more time today, I'd make another video where I actually calculated this out. Uh, the third variation of this same problem you will see is you will also see a problem that asks you to find electric potential. Now notice the difference between potential. There's very little difference. If you notice the formula for potential and electric field looks almost the same except you'll notice the absence of the square in your calculation. But also is this, an electric field such as this is a scalar function, which means there, there is no sums of the V's, X's, and Y's. There's no X's and Y's for potentials. If you want to do a potential problem, all you do is find your potential for each charged particle individually and then you'll notice this formula does not have absolute value bars because when you do potentials, all you do, let's say for example, let's say it was this problem and you wanted to find the potential at this point. You would have a V for two, another V for the other positive two, and then you would subtract the V for the three. And that is all you would do. You would just find your find your values for your potential and then you would just add and subtract those potentials up there's no vectors there's no signs no cosines anything like that anyway i hope this video helps catch you later bye